woke up in the desert like I've been dropped out of the sky. You got a name? I don't know. This movie should be an Oscar contender for most intriguing title. Contrary to how the title makes it sound, Cowboys and Aliens actually has a story in which a man played by Daniel Craig it suddenly wakes up in the desert, he has no idea what happened, he has this weird gadget on his wrist, and it isn't until he arrives in town that not only does he discover that he was probably involved in some sort of crime, but he gets apprehended. Coming to claim justice on him is a marshal or a sergeant, I, I, I can't really remember what his title was, but a man named Dollarhide, played by Harrison Ford, who comes in and wants him because he did him wrong in the past. It isn't until, conveniently in the world of Hollywood, aliens arrive, attack the town, capture some of the people and now basically all that stuff that happened with uh, Daniel Craig's character is put aside and basically the movie becomes a group on a mission sort of thing in order to defeat these aliens and get the people that were captured back. I'm saddened to say that maybe, just maybe, I put my expectations for this movie really high considering that this is a movie with James Bond, Indiana Jones, and it's directed by the guy who did Iron Man, John Favreau. So I was super hyped for this movie. This movie was hyped for uh, since last year's Comic Con when they unveiled the teaser trailer. They had the panel and everything. And the title alone makes it go, man, I want to see this. Unfortunately, it didn't really meet my expectations. It's not to say that it's a bad movie. It's actually pretty entertaining. The whole cast is great. You got, uh, along, aside from Daniel Craig and Harrison Ford, you got Sam Rockwell. You got uh, Clint. I think his name is Clancy Brown. Olivia Wilde, who is starting... Olivia Wilde, along with Emma Stone and Jason Bateman, are like the it people right now. They're like in everything. And along with them, you got the aliens. Personally, I would have preferred if the story was a little more linear. I mean, for the title, it seems like it's just cowboys and aliens fighting. And, of course, we can't just have that because then it'll just be some brainless action movie. So we got an intriguing storyline that does keep you guessing. It makes you wonder, uh, why are the aliens here? Why does Daniel Craig's character have the thing on his wrist? And there's a lot of mystery surrounding that. But when they pull it off, it's kind of like, eh. And this movie does something very cliche when it comes to one of the characters in this movie where I thought that that was it for them. But then they, let's just say they appear again. And the the whole reasoning behind that is just kind of like, oh, okay, how many times have we seen this? Performance-wise, everybody did a really good job. Harrison Ford is kind of turning into how I explained uh, Tommy Jones was in my Captain and me and Yaya's Captain America review, in which Harrison Ford is, it, despite being a great actor, he's kind of doing Harrison Ford in almost all the movies that he's in. Here, you know, he's grunting. He's like, I want that man. Daniel Craig. It's it's interesting because Daniel Craig was really badass. He was cool. Uh, he played it off very well. He's a good actor. Sam Rockwell was very good. If you guys don't remember, he played... Oh my goodness, I cannot remember his name. But the sleazy business guy from Iron Man 2. That was him, and he played a bartender in this movie. They called him Doc. Wow, such an original name for a Western. You know, Clancy Brown was pretty good too as the town preacher. If you have a preacher or some sort of church uh, going or a Christian guy in a movie that is... On a Western setting, and it's like, a, like I said, a man on a, a man on a mission, a group of men on a mission kind of movie. You do not want to be a man of God because we can kind of tell what's gonna happen to you, and that happens in this movie, and it's getting a little old. The aliens looked cool. I mean, it wasn't really groundbreaking, but I loved how they, you know, acted and just moved around, and they actually had some sort of sort of communication between each other. Visual effects were great. But again, I just I was really expecting this to be one of the very great movies of the summer, and there were certain moments where I felt like it just lacked. Especially one scene in particular where we have another cast member that I thought was really good in one of my favorite movies from back in 2007, There Will Be Blood, and that's the actor Paul Dano. Uh, I forgot to mention him. Paul Dano's in this movie. He plays uh, Harrison Ford's son. Uh, being that Harrison Ford is kind of an authoritative figure, uh, Paul Dano plays that character that, oh, you know who my dad is, so I can go ahead and just... You know, he's a bully. He's the town bully. He, I thought, gave the worst performance out of the entire cast. Why? It wasn't because it was bad, but I felt like there were certain scenes where he was trying way too hard and he was going a little over the top, especially in his introductory scene. And like I said, that's the scene that really threw me off at, at the beginning and made me go, okay, what kind of movie is this going to be? And it's sad to say that John Favreau barely managed to pull it off. I mean, his direction is still great. I loved, uh, you know, what he does with characters and whatnot, but I mostly blame the writing, especially from the fact that 
This was written by Alex Kurt- Kurtzman and Roberto Orsi, who did the first two Transformers movies, and he did one of my and they did one of my favorite uh, movies from 2009, Star Trek. But then when I saw the opening credits and I saw their names, I was like, cool. And then I saw three more names under their their names, and I'm like, oh. Oh boy. And sure enough, it shows that this script went through some sort of rewrite after rewrite after rewrite. So I give Cowboys and Aliens a passable 7.7 out of 10, which is a C+. Enjoyed it while I was watching it, but I honestly have no desire to see it again. And I was hoping to have that feeling, so it was slightly a bit of a disappointment. But again, that's not to say that this was not an entertaining movie, because it was. They're here.